spin is a very abstract idea that doesn't really make sense in our everyday world. But as a simple model, if we imagine electrons as being very small particles moving through space, as they move, they will also rotate or spin. Just as a ball being thrown through the air will spin and rotate as it moves. There are only two ways the electron can spin, just like there are only two ways the ball can rotate. With something like a ball, we would usually say it is rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise, but that depends which way you are looking at it and what you are comparing the rotation to, meaning we can't describe electron spin as clockwise or anti-clockwise. Instead, we describe the two possible ways electrons can spin as spin up and spin down, written as positive half and negative half, and shown on diagrams as a half arrow pointing up or down. Without getting too physics-y here, because electrons have a charge, as they spin, they generate a very weak magnetic field. You can kind of think of a spinning electron as being like a tiny bar magnet. Now, magnetic fields have a direction based on north and south. As a result, an electron that is spin up will have a magnetic field with an opposite direction to an electron that is spin down. Basically, it's like the tiny bar magnet gets flipped upside down if the spin of an electron changes. This all sounds very confusing, and at this level you won't ever be examined on it. However, it is really important, as if you take two electrons with opposite spins, their magnetic fields are opposite and cancel each other out. And this enables two electrons with opposite spin to exist in the same area, despite the fact that two negative charges will cause repulsion. Because of this, a maximum of two electrons are able to be in any one orbital. And this means as atoms fill up with electrons, extra electrons are forced to exist in other orbitals with different shapes that are often further away from the nucleus of the atom.